Now I'm joined by Jeremiah Jacques for more of a positive look at the Olympic Games. Jeremiah, thank you for joining me. Thanks very much for having me. Now, the Apostle Paul was greatly inspired by the Isthmian Games, the ancient or an ancient relative of the Olympics. He describes a lot of parallels from these games for the modern Christian. And uh, that is, I believe, the subject of an article that you're, you're working on right now, Jeremiah. Yes. Yeah, so right now in Paris on tracks and trampolines, in swimming pools and river stretches, on wrestling mats and in the velodrome, the world's best athletes are competing against each other. And they are, as you said, taking part in a tradition that spans back millennia. The Olympic Games started all the way back in the 8th century BC in Olympia, Greece. And ever since then, they have captured the attention of sports enthusiasts and most anyone else who has watched them. The modern games transcend typical sports markets and they captivate worldwide attention as little else can. And that's partly because they give spectators a feeling of being connected with a global community. And it's partly because they offer kind of a riveting microcosm of national rivalries and competitions. But the main reason why so many watch the game so enthusiastically is just to see the sheer athleticism, the unmatched levels of inspirational athleticism that they display. Back in ancient Greece, Olympians strove to emulate the traits of Homeric warriors. Many of these early participants lived during times of peace, but they were inspired by stories they had heard of the strength of Ajax and the speed of Achilles, the vigor of Ulysses, and the arete, which means excellence and determination, of men like Diomedes. So the desire of the ancient Greeks to demonstrate these kinds of warrior ideals, even during peacetime, drove many of them to compete in the Olympics. And there, through dazzling feats, they pursued glory on the field of athletics instead of the field of battle. Now, in our modern era of technology, athletes are really striving to eclipse records against the stopwatch and against the measuring tape. And of course, they're still pursuing precise, exacting excellence. Their quest for excellence pits them not only against their contemporary competitors, but also against every athlete who has lived and set records before them. This ambitious pursuit cannot be undertaken without great quantities of arete. The pursuit of this kind of elite level athleticism is very inspiring to see, and the Bible actually draws on this to teach Christians some profound lessons. Back in the first century AD, when the Apostle Paul was writing his epistles, the Olympic Games were enormously popular. And Paul's familiarity with various competitive sports really spawned some of his most effective analogies. Every four years, a set of games called the Isthmian Games that you mentioned a moment ago were held in that narrow isthmus in Corinth. And the Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown commentary points out that Paul's sports analogies would have been especially impacting for church members in Corinth, just because these Olympian games, these uh, Isthmian games took place there. The commentary states, the Isthmian games were to the Greeks rather a passion than a mere amusement, hence their suitableness as an image of Christian earnestness. These competitions were a subject of patriotic pride to the Corinthians who lived in the immediate neighborhood end quote. So the Apostle Paul was well aware of the games and of their enormous popularity, and he told church members in Corinth that the life of a Christian is similar to the quest for victory that they saw in the runners who competed in these games. In 1 Corinthians 9.24, he wrote, know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one receives the prize, so run that you may obtain, end quote. Paul also pointed out that the stakes for an aspiring Christian are far, far higher than those of an athlete. Verse 25 says, now they, these Olympic athletes, push themselves to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. So he's stressing that 
the Olympians, the only thing they really receive is some award that will eventually turn to dust, but that a Christian is pushing for life, real life that lasts forever. Paul went on to explain that he exerted himself to the utmost so that he would not fail to secure that incorruptible crown of eternal life. In verses 26 and 27, he wrote, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I've preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So these passages are just a few of the ones where the Apostle Paul pointed his Christian brothers to the finest athletes of their day. It was an analogy that he often employed because these athletes, like today's contenders in Paris, were brimming with passion, zeal, and a deep-rooted drive to demonstrate arete in their sport, real excellence and character, even though doing so required them to bring their bodies into subjection with the most arduous training regimens and self-discipline. The Bible makes plain that zeal is fundamental to the life of a Christian. You can see that in passages like Isaiah 59, 17. And it makes plain that self-discipline is an absolute necessity for someone who's striving to live like Christ. Proverbs 25, 28 shows that. The Bible also reveals in passages like Colossians 3, 23, that Christians must struggle to invest their hearts deeply into all that they do. And it shows in places like Matthew 5, 48, that they must strive to become perfect. And then Philippians 4, 4 shows that a Christian must do all of this with joy. Now, it is true that Olympic competitions can often become, you know, that, that microcosm of rivalries between nations, and it can bring out the selfishness and aggression of the athletes. But this world-class athleticism can also occasion the noblest zeal and passion, and it can showcase the heights that the human spirit is capable of achieving. So if you join the hundreds of millions who are watching the Olympic Games in Paris, I hope you'll contemplate the self-discipline required for these athletes to have achieved such mastery over themselves and reflect on the sheer effort that they exert in their quest for excellence and for a medal and consider the spiritual parallels. Thank you so much for that, Jeremiah. I think that is a great perspective to have uh, when watching those games. There are just so many stories that kind of brim with lessons for the Christian life.